when the main board of environmental protection was petitioned to consider the advanced clean cars program or california rule that process allowed 150 climate activists to bypass the legislature in an attempt to force a progressive agenda at the expense and to the detriment of every Mainer. On Thursday, December 21st, BEP will vote on this California rule. The past has clearly shown that mandates forced upon citizens have unattended and sometimes dire consequences. We've seen this before, and there is trouble on the horizon. Hello, this is Senator Lisa Keim of Oxford County. It's my pleasure to join you for this week's Republican Radio Address. The new rule under consideration by Maine BEP will require that 43% of new car sales for the 2027 model year be zero emission electric vehicles. That ratio increases to 82% by the 2032 model year. Setting aside concerns about the petition process that allowed this, the decision by EEP to proceed with the petition is incredibly alarming, since this seismic shift will hurt our economy and risks our rights of mobility. That is the reason Republican legislative leaders sent a letter to BEP board members last week asking them to put Maine peoples first and reject this heavy-handed approach. The government mandates we saw during the pandemic showed us that unchecked bureaucracy negatively impacts the people it serves. Nationally, the adoption of EVs is happening much slower than environmentalists and even automakers expected. Ford, GM, and others ramped up production only to find EV sales drop to the extent that those same automakers are now cutting production or canceling plans to build new plants altogether. That is simply because the first wave of demand for EVs by early adopters, namely high income earners and environmentalists and tech enthusiasts, has already been satisfied. What's left is a vehicle buying market that centers on cost and practicality more than anything else. EVs are challenging for Maine because many of us drive long distances to get to work or get groceries. We're rightly concerned about the shorter range that EVs have in colder months and a sporadic charging infrastructure that could leave us stuck on a back road somewhere with no way to recharge. Many families have expressed concern that they cannot afford higher prices for EVs and the related higher repair and insurance costs. Additionally, while electricity rates have come down or will come down next year, they're still 79% higher than just two years ago. These increased costs will have a major impact on family budgets. If BEP adopts this rule, the impact it will have on our auto dealers will be profound. Under new rules, dealers will receive 43 EVs for every 100 vehicles shipped to Maine. Yet some automakers don't make an EV. Does that mean sales for the rest of the brand will be banned in Maine? If this rule doesn't violate the Commerce Clause, it certainly puts Maine auto dealers at a disadvantage as consumers may be forced to go outside the state to buy a particular car or truck. This rule puts our auto dealers at a competitive disadvantage. However, the state won't lose a dime. We will still collect our sales and use tax whether a vehicle is purchased in Maine or another state. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's that limited supply raises prices, period. Imagine how high the price of a gas-powered vehicle, one that can be sold here legally, will skyrocket. Adopting limits that favor EVs over conventional vehicles will have devastating effects on Maine's economy. That's the bottom line. Is it reasonable for climate activists to jeopardize our reliable transportation and put this level of hardship on Maine's people in pursuit of an idealistic benefit that cannot be measured? Market demands and science will continue to bring low emission vehicle options to Maine's marketplace. Until then, unelected bureaucrats should stay clear and not tip the scales. Republicans stand with Maine's people, our businesses, and our economy. We strongly urge Board of Environmental Protection members to join us in that regard by abandoning the advanced clean cars rulemaking altogether. 
Again, this is Senator Lisa Keim of Oxford County. I hope you have a great weekend.